In this video, I'd like to talk about some of the career skills that you really need to think about and intentionally begin to develop while you were in college. Now, some of these uh, you know, skills for the workplace may seem pretty self-obvious. You're learning about your particular uh, subject area and your area of expertise and things like that, and you're putting in the work that way. But there are some other things that you can do in college that you may not think about in, uh, doing that will improve your opportunities once you enter the workforce. So, you know, right now, again, you're being very studious. You're, you're probably taking this very seriously. You're, you're looking at things. You're writing about things. You're turning in papers. You're considering different uh, uh, avenues of thinking, and, and you're developing a lot of good skills in college, and, and, and that's important. That's what college is there for, not only to, to uh, for you to be educated in a particular area, but to learn how to learn and to, uh, to, to learn how to work with others and things like that. So you're, you're off to a good start already just by, just by entering the, the uh, college game here. But pretty soon you're going to graduate, and you're going to enter the workforce, and you're going to find out that things may not be exactly what you thought they were, that, that there are some other skills that you might need that you can start to develop right now. So let's take a look at these. First of all, let's talk about some of the skills that employers want, some of the things they're looking for that we need to, to begin to develop here while you're in college. So working on critical thinking and problem solving, that's something you're doing in your courses probably, and uh, so you're learning to develop those critical thinking skills, not just in your own area, but just in general, learning to develop critical thinking skills, learning to develop those problem solving skills, how to attack problems from different angles, how to consider things from different perspectives. So, And that's part of what college is about, is broadening your worldview and helping you understand things from different perspectives so that you can engage in that kind of critical thinking and not just kind of let things wash over you and accept them, uh, you know, as, they, as people tell you they are, but to think on your own. Uh, you're developing some spoken and written communication skills, and employers really want that. They want people who can speak effectively, not just in a presentational sense, but just you know, speaking to, uh, to to people interpersonally, speaking to coworkers and, and supervisors and customers and clients and different things like that. They want people who can communicate effectively using uh, you know, spoken communication in that way. They also want people who can write effectively. And and this is sort of a degrading skill in some ways. Recently, a skill that has been degrading uh, because we've gotten so used to shorthand in text and and informal types of communication like that over social media. Uh, but employers want people who can write effectively and and do so in a in a professional way, not using that shorthand that we use for all those things. So you're developing hopefully those important written skills and taking those seriously while you're in college because employers do want those as well. In addition, they want soft skills. They want people who can relate to other people. They want people who can use empathy. They want people who can, you know, adapt their communication style and adapt their um, their their manner to, to the people that they're working with and the people that they're going to be around in terms of clients and customers. Again, they want these soft skills and, and uh, not just the the kind of the hard skills, so to speak, that go along with that. If you're going to go into accounting, they don't want just people who can, you know, crunch the numbers and keep books accurately and do that kind of thing. They want people who can do all that, plus get along with others and just have the ability to, to have those soft skills. So, so they're looking for those soft skills. They're looking for effective teamwork. Hopefully this is something you're working on in college as well, uh, is how to work in a team and, and knowing that there are very specific skills that go along with that. That, uh, that there are, there are different uh, communication techniques, for example, in working with a team. There are different conflict management techniques that come into play when you're working with a team. There are different, you know, uh, things to understand about, about leading a team and also about just being a member of a team. Even if you're not in a leadership position, what are your responsibilities? So they want people how to, who know how to function as part of a team and get along well and work effectively within the construct of that team. They want people with a work ethic. They want people who are going to show up on time. They want people who are going to stay focused on, on what they're doing and not be on social media all day or distracted by their phone or whatever. They want people who are going to come in or are going to come in and put in the time and the effort that's necessary um, for them to be a productive member of that, uh, of that workplace. And that's what you're there to do. And they want that kind of focus and that kind of ethic. They want people with some intercultural competence. You know, we're, it's an increasingly shrinking world, and you're doing business and, and working alongside and with people who are from different cultures. And I don't just mean from different countries, uh, although that's certainly a part of it. That's one aspect of intercultural communication. But I'm talking about people just who are from, you know, different parts of the same city. It may have different perspectives or may have had different uh, upbringings and maybe of a different religion or so. you know, all these types of things. They want people with some intercultural competence who can interact effectively with people um, from these different kinds of, of cultures and, and who come from different cultures. 
Yeah. So those are skills that employers want, and you're, and you're probably developing these in college as it is, and that's great. That's a big part of what college is helping you develop these types of skills. But there are a couple things that I want you to consider, and specifically these five skills that you're probably not learning in college. They're not necessarily a part of the college structure, or they're, they're not something that can really be learned in college. So one of them is working with people. And, and I know that you're working with people in college, you're probably working in groups, and you're in class with people, and you're, but you're going to find that college is a pretty homogenous place when you're working with these people. They're probably about your same age, they're probably sort of the same generation, uh, maybe they have the same interests as you because they're studying the same things, and so you're, you're grouped together in college with people who are kind of like you to a certain extent. When you enter the workforce, you're going to be thrown in with a group of people who are probably much different than you. And so being able to work with those people effectively. Now, I'm not saying being able to be best friends with all these people. I'm saying being able to function with all of these people, understanding that you're all part of the same team, and theoretically you're all headed in the same direction. You all want the same thing, right? You're all working for the same employer and working toward the same goal. Um, being able to work with those people, whether you like them or not, is an important part of that. So being able to <coughs> excuse me, deal with difficult people, function with people and work alongside people that you may not necessarily like at a, at a personal level or interpersonally, but being able to again function with those people, being able to put up with those people, being able to communicate with them effectively, even if it's just a sense of communicating with them about work. You don't have to, again, I'm not asking people to be best friends, but you got to be able to work with a variety of people. Diverse, you're going to see much larger diversity in terms of backgrounds and ages and, and, uh, and, and styles of uh, of working with others. So I'm just that ability to, to understand you need to develop those skills now to, to diversify your your working experience with people, the, your, your, the type of people and the, and the groups of people that you're exposed to. You need to expand that while you're in college so that you can be effectively prepared for that when you enter the workplace. I kind of touched on this with work ethic, but uh, you're, you need to really even more so learn some heightened accountability. Um, well, you know, when you're in college, you, if you're a little late for class or whatever, you show up in your PJs, you wake up late, you show up in your PJs, or if you're going to be a little late with an assignment, you talk to your instructor or whatever, and, and probably you're going to get a pass on some of these types of things. Not so much in the workplace. I mean, the, the expectation is that you will be there on time. You will be prepared to work. You will be not, you know, dressed in your in your PJs without your hair comb, that you will have, you know, showered and brushed your teeth in the morning, that you will be there with the mindset of, being focused on work, that you will be accountable for your work when do when work is due, when there's a deadline, that you meet that deadline, and uh, and that you be held to uh, you know this higher standard of accountability. The focus is going to be on you. The finger's going to be pointed at you for these things. So we need to start uh, preparing for that as well and learn some uh, and really push ourselves toward more accountability, even even when you're in college. So that means you know that means not making excuses for skipping class. And not making excuses for why you're showing up in your PJs and why you're doing this or that, and and not asking your instructor necessarily for for extensions on deadline unless it's you know, an absolute emergency. Um, that that these are things that you're going to be responsible for in the working place, and now is the time to start developing those skills. Advanced presentation skills. Um, you may have some basic instruction on on giving presentations in college, and you may give a lot of presentations in college. But the the uh, the stakes for those are probably pretty low. You're going to get some feedback on those, and beyond that, it's not really the the, the bar is not really high for that. In many types of situations in the workplace, you're going to be asked to give uh, more advanced presentations, and, the, and again, the bar is going to be higher there. So we need to to prep to push ourselves to really push ourselves into to learning these advanced presentation skills, um, so that we can be prepared for that. It'll also help you set yourself apart from from other people in the workplace, if you can really demonstrate these advanced presentation skills. So, so really, I, I would just push yourself. I know public speaking is not a lot of, not the favorite of many people, and I understand that. Uh, it wouldn't be for me when I was in college either, but, <clears throat> but it is a very important skill and one that we need to spend some time really um, growing in and learning these more advanced presentation skills. Again, not letting ourselves on the hook with, you know, just being able to get through a, a speech without passing out or whatever, but we need to really push ourselves until we have these more uh, high-level skills in terms of presentations. We need to prepare ourselves for competition in the workplace. Um, now, again, oftentimes you, you're working at the same place, you're working alongside people, you're theoretically working toward the same goal for that employer, right? But 
within that, there's also a lot of, of competition, you know, competition for who gets to lead this work group or who gets this promotion or who gets credit for this idea or whatever. Um, there's a lot of comp internal competition in the workplace, even if it's just friendly competition, but there's a lot of competition. So you don't have that as much in in college. It's it's fairly rare, for example, to be graded on a curve in the class. Uh, it's, it's not as common to have that. So you're not really being graded against one another. You're not really competing against your classmates for, you know, only so many people are going to get an A in here. But in the workplace, you are. Only so many people are going to get that promotion. Only so many people are going to get recognized for this for this project. Um, so there's there's a real sense of competition there, and we need to be uh, preparing ourselves for that. And then finally, handling feedback is something that, that we need to learn how to do well. You get feedback on papers and assignments in college and things, and that's great. But in, in the workplace, you're going to get some very specific feedback and oftentimes some very direct feedback, some very blunt feedback from your supervisor if things aren't going well. And the truth is, when things do go well, you know, and, and when you turn on a good paper in college, you get that A or A plus or whatever on you, you feel good about yourself. When you do a good job in the workplace, you're probably not going to get that. You might get a you know a way to go from your boss or something, but that's about it. And that's that's not even all the time. So we need to be prepared to be able to motivate ourselves without that that positive feedback and be able to handle both constructive criticism and also feedback that may not be as pleasant. So how do we build some of these skills that kill, so to speak, some of these things that we can be working on? Well, first of all, we need to seek out, that, you need to seek out that experience while you're in college, uh, whether that's through uh, searching for an internship that exposes you to the, uh, you know, kind of the real world workplace that you're going to be entering. An internship would be a great way to do that, or through service learning, engaging in some service learning and, you know, within the field that you're trying to enter and, and trying to work that out. And if nothing else, if you, if you can't find something like that, then start your own thing. Start something on your own. Start a start a group. Start a start a club. Start a you know charity or something or anything that gets you exposure uh, to these types of skills. That, that uh, so we need to seek that out. Though we need to be intentional about finding those things or creating those things. You can join a club. A lot of times, again, I, men I mentioned that before. We can join a club. You can start a club, but you can join a club, and and that will expose you to some different situations as well. If you if you're picking the right club. You can use what's available. What's what does your school have that's unique that you can, you know, that you can uh, that you can grab onto and and take advantage of that. Um, you know, every every school is different. Every school has something unique about it that they have to offer. So, what does your school have specifically that you can take a part of, that you can be a part of, that you can take advantage of, and use what's available there to you while you're in uh, college to to really expand some of these skills. We can look for leadership training. Almost every university, every school has some t type of leadership program, leadership training that will give us exposure so, to some, some of these different things as well. So uh, you can seek out those opportunities, check with your, your student life area, your student affairs area to see what's available uh, at, at your specific school um, for that. But we can we can look for some leadership training and really push ourselves to be involved in those types of things. And we can find a mentor, somebody in the field maybe that we want to get into who can uh, not just tell us about, you know, what's it like to work in that field or whatever, but can maybe expose us to some of these things. Maybe we can go shadow that person. Maybe we can, you know, at least have conversations with them about what should I expect that I'm not expecting in this? What, what should I be prepared for here? What's it like to work in this field? Not just what do you like about it and why should I get into it, but, you know, what are some of the people like that you work with? What's it like to... to uh, have to work along people that you don't really care for that much. You know, what's it like when you get a project and it goes badly? What's what are some of the responses there? But you can find somebody who's in that field, uh, find a mentor there, and uh, and ask them to uh, kind of be blunt with you and be frank with you about these types of things. So the point here is, and if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer questions about how we develop skills, how we communicate in college, what we can do now to, to be preparing ourselves for the workplace, anything along those lines would be would be open to questions on all that. But my point here is it's up to us. It's up to you to take advantage of what you have while you're in college and not only take the, the typical college experience where you're learning about a subject and you're, you're experiencing these things, but really push yourself to get outside of those limits and truly prepare yourself for the workplace by diversifying those experiences and uh, and seeking them out. And it really is going to be up to you to find these things. They're not just going to come uh, and probably be presented to you. You're going to have to make the effort to go out and find these things uh, that can really truly prepare you for the workplace. And again, in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you. But 
but good luck on developing those skills and and really work hard at seeking out those experiences.